Okay, I'm going to approach both of these the same way. I am going to use lots and lots and lots of bubble wrap. Hey guys, today is Monday, June 29th, and I have a lot of stuff to get done today. I got to ship out some eBay orders. I'd like to list some eBay since I haven't been listing hardly any eBay stuff in like the last week. And I'm going to go out to my antique mall and replenish it because sold a lot of stuff over the weekend and i'm going to take you guys with me let's get to work all right these two things i went ahead and pulled from my storage units they sold over the weekend this hat i've had for quite some time i think i had it listed for around 10 15 bucks best offer nobody was really doing anything and it took like a year and somebody finally sent me an offer of five dollars plus shipping so i accepted this hat i got maybe a dozen of these at the garage sale for a little under a dollar each and this sold for $8.99 plus shipping. This is going out to a viewer named Curtis, who goes by Reed Flips on eBay. Curtis, thank you for the support. And if you guys want to check out Curtis's eBay store, I'll put a link down below in the description. Okay, something I get asked a lot is how I ship hats. So I'm going to show you guys. I use these 8x6x4 boxes. I've seen some people ship hats in bubble mailers like this, but I don't like to do that because they're just going to get crushed. And, you know... When the buyer receives it, you don't want them seeing a crushed hat, and then they can leave you a bad feedback and all that. So I ship them in 8 by 6 by 4 boxes, and I also put them in a uh, little poly bag. I like these smaller boxes because they don't weigh a whole lot. They're only like, you know, 3 or 4 ounces, and then you add in the weight of the hat. It usually comes out to about 8 ounces or so, and then I always just add that onto the listing price. So I just do calculated shipping eight ounces for the hat and that always seems to work out if you guys don't have these boxes i highly recommend them i use them with other things too i will put a link down below in the description all right next thing i'm shipping out is in c3 it's the cincinnati reds button from 1961 this sold for 11.99 free shipping all right next order has a number of things and most of them are down here in d6 so we've got some dvd seasons new in the plastic uh, there's two seasons of weeds and two seasons of pretty little liars and the next is up here in d4 this is an old john steinbeck novel the winter of our discontent my wife actually found these at a garage sale and picked them up for me to resell and this was in the big storage units that i just bought all this stuff here sold for 55 46 free shipping and it will go media mail so it'll probably cost four or five dollars a ship something like that those are also going out to a viewer named deborah she says hi john thank you for being a great inspiration to so many of us that would have never known where to begin we are now running our own small business keep up your great positive attitude by the way i bought a puzzle and several items from you about nine months ago Turns out it was rare, and I flipped it for $75. That is fantastic, Deborah. Good for you. Goes to show you what I know, right? Deborah also shared her eBay store, so if you guys want to see that as well, I'll put it down in the description below. All right, next thing is on here, C6. I'm actually not shipping this out, but I will at least show you guys what it is. This is a set of four Cincinnati Reds bobbleheads, and they were all stadium giveaways, but they're meant to like line up and make a uh, picture in the background. You can kind of see it right there. I've got, I think, like $8 into these. They're part of a bulk buy, and they sold for $29.99, and we're going to do local pickup. All right, next is down here in E5. This is one of those staplers that I got. They seem to be selling pretty well. This is a Panasonic. This sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Okay, last two things are a couple of sewing machines. First is this Brother. We'll go ahead and pull this down. I'll show you guys. This is a Project Runway Edition. I got this at a garage sale about two weeks ago. I paid $40. It sold for $199.99 plus shipping. And next is right here. Pull this up. This is also a Brother Project Runway Edition. It is a different model. Uh, I picked this up maybe a month ago at a garage sale. I paid $70 for this one and it sold for the same price. $199.99 plus shipping. These are both pretty awkward and kind of heavy and just kind of a weird thing to ship so i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to pack it and how i'm going to ship these okay i'm going to approach both of these the same way i am going to use lots and lots and lots of bubble wrap i'm going to put bubble wrap around here and then i'm going to put it in this direction and then i'm going to wrap it around the whole thing and then i'm probably going to do a wrap around the whole thing sideways too with both of them so that's Kind of how I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to find some boxes that I think will hopefully fit it. If not, I'm probably going to have to cut them down. And I have two different kinds of bubble wrap you guys have probably seen me use. These small bubbles will not do the job for these sewing machines, so we're going to use the big bubbles for these guys. Here's 
Here's the boxes I'm going to use for these things. I got these at Menards. They're 18 by 18 by 24. I know Lowe's and Home Depot sells them too. I think they're like $1.50, $2, something like that. But even though they cost a little bit of money, uh, in my opinion, they're worth it when I'm shipping out something valuable. So this is going to fit down in here, and I'm going to break it down. But first, I'm going to put a bunch of packing paper down there to kind of cushion it a little bit. All right, we got it in here. What I'm going to do now is score all the edges and cut the flaps down. And then I'm going to fill all this space with more packing paper. I like to go ahead and score the edges before I put the packing paper in because it just makes it harder to do. Then, once this is boxed up, we're gonna give it a good shake and make sure it's not moving in there. And if it's not moving at all, that's a good indication that it will arrive safely. All right, they're packed up and ready to go. All right, guys, back at my antique mall. It's been almost a week since I've been here and a number of things have sold. I've sold some things off of the wall. There were some things on the floor, sold records. So today for this booth, I brought in, what was this, about 20 records or so? Kinks, Cream, The Doors, Steppenwolf, Willie Nelson, Moody Blues. Pretty good variety. This here my dad actually found at a garage sale, so I brought that in. Brought in this laundry sign. I sold a rotary phone just like this, so I brought another one in. Brought in a lantern and this uh, magazine rack. And then here is my other booth. And I think I sold at least three or four pieces off of the wall. So I brought in some comic book artwork that I'm gonna put up. Got a Tucker Bernhardt autographed photo. Here's some odds and ends. I got uh, Tony Perez bobblehead. These two are uh, Chad Johnson and TJ Hushmanzada. It's a beer tray. I think that garage just sticker price off of there. Here's a blowtorch and a bunch of records. I've been selling a bunch of these records too, so I thought I'd go ahead and replenish some. All right, I'll show you guys a little preview of what these records are. Rascals, Joe Cocker, <laughs> Cincinnati Reds, Wings, another Steppenwolf, Arctic Monkeys, Holland Oats, Led Zeppelin, Tom Petty, Pink Floyd, and another Led Zeppelin. A number of you guys have stopped by my booze and signed my guest book since I've last been here, so I'm gonna give some shout outs. All right, I've got notes from Aaron, Nelson and Sydney, Sandra, Jeremy, Dwayne, Michelle and Gary, Rick, Stacy, and Steven. Guys, thank you all so much for the support. Really appreciate you coming by and checking out my boots. It's Tuesday morning. I have a handful of eBay orders to ship out, but first I want to answer some viewer questions. First is from DJ1698, and I see that name a lot. Uh, DJ, I noticed that you're always one of the first to comment on my videos, so I want to let you know it is appreciated. It does not go unnoticed. He asks, what's your opinion on those pallet liquidation companies? Do you think the merchandise is a lot of junk besides a few good items? So there's not an easy answer to that because there's so many liquidation companies now that are buying truckloads of returns from... Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, just like all kinds of places. And depending on how each company kind of handles how they sell it, I think it can be a good deal. I've seen some companies price it by the pallet and it seems to be a little too high to make money. And I've seen some where it's cheap and there's plenty of money to be made. And I've gone to some where they'll auction off each pallet. I remember six or seven years ago, I was buying a bunch of Amazon returns by the pallet and I was making really good money doing it, but they stopped getting Amazon returns. So I kind of stopped going there. There's a place in Cincinnati and what they do is they just put everything in these big bins and they price it like the first day is like $5 an item and then four, and then three, and then it gets cheaper and cheaper. And I've pulled some good stuff out of there. So I would say wherever you're at, look around, call around, see what liquidation companies are out there and how much they're selling this stuff for where they're getting the the items and a lot of times they'll let you inspect so like if they're going to have a pallet sale you can go in and kind of inspect the items and kind of get an idea of what you're buying last thing i'll say about it is if you do decide to buy a pallet don't invest your whole bankroll on it so if you've got like a thousand dollars in reserve to buy product to resell I would not advise spending all your money, all that thousand dollars on one pallet. You know, don't put all your eggs in a basket, especially with something like that, because it's usually a gamble. Okay, next is from Christine Brewster. Do you do refunds on your eBay? I'm not sure what to do with that. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but there are a couple of different scenarios on returns and refunds that I'll walk you through and how I handle it. First is one that just happened the other day where an item shows delivered, the person's claiming they didn't get it, and they want a refund. 
So usually with something like that, I'll upload the tracking again, say, look, it got delivered. And every time that's happened, eBay just refunds them with no fault to me. So that's how I handle that one. Another one that happens occasionally is an item gets broken in transit and the buyer will send me a picture and say, look, it was broken, this is what happened. I refund them immediately and then I file the claim through either the USPS or through FedEx and then I get my money back that way. And then I make sure that they send me some pictures because when you're filing a claim like that, I do it on the website of either FedEx or the post office and then they want you to put pictures in with it. So I make sure I get some pictures. Last scenario that I'm thinking of off the top of my head, uh, somebody will message and say, hey, I don't like it, I wanna return it. And it's really not an issue with me. eBay will let you say no returns but really when it comes down to it, if the buyer wants to return it, they're gonna return it. And if they want their money back, eBay's gonna make sure they get their money back and they're gonna take it out of your pocket. So I just go ahead and offer returns. I don't offer free returns on everything, certain things I will, but yeah, if they're not happy with the purchase, I just have them send it back because I can refund them and then just relist it and sell it again. All right, let's get some eBay orders shipped out. First is right here at E2. This is that ozone generator for hunting I picked up a couple weeks ago at a garage sale. Paid five bucks for it. I listed it for like 60 or best offer. Somebody said a best offer of $45 plus shipping and I accepted. All right, right next to it an E1 sold something. This is a jumbo Ken Griffey Jr. starting lineup figure. These aren't worth a whole lot of money. I got this as part of a uh, bulk buy at a garage sale, so I probably only have a dollar or two into it. It sold for $11.99 plus shipping. All right, next is out of this bin I was working in yesterday. This is a vintage Sunoco gas station license plate topper. So I guess the gas station back in the day would let you personalize what letters you wanted, and uh, this person was part of a fraternity. So they had their fraternity on there. I think it's Delta Sigma Phi. I got this for a dollar at a garage sale a couple weeks ago. Actually, the same sale that I got this ozone generator. Uh, paid a dollar for that. It sold for $69.99 free shipping. Next is down here in D5. This is something I've had for quite a long time. I'd say a year or more. Found this in a box of stuff I got in a bulk buy. These are some old antique scissors, W.E.B. and Son. They date back to around the Civil War, so definitely really old. Had these listed, I think, at like maybe 70 bucks or best offer to start, and over time I just kept lowering them and like nobody would bite on them. So finally got an offer of $15 free shipping and I accepted. These are going out to your name, Christopher. Christopher, thank you for the support, man. I really appreciate it. All right, next is in B1. This is a Seattle Sounders football club like a soccer team i don't know if they're still around to be honest this sold for 11.99 plus shipping this is also going out to a viewer a viewer named logan bought this logan thank you for the business hope you like the hat all right last thing i'm pulling is back here in f3 this is a little panasonic uh wireless phone base station this was in that big box of phones i got at that garage sale maybe a month ago i got less than a dollar into this. It sold for $24.99 for shipping. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>